Hey guys, Mark here. Welcome to a little problem solving video. Today we have a problem regarding Pascal's triangle. Uh, the basic problem says, uh, or asks rather, given an index of the Pascal's triangle, return the list representation of the nth index of of the Pascal's triangle, or rather the row. So if we asked for the zeroth row, we'd just get one, um, right? So just to kind of demo this guy over here, we just get one. So this would be the zeroth row. The second row, we'd get one, one, third row, one, two, one, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, this solution, I kind of want to propose to you guys something that's a little more clever and using information given that they're asking for an nth row. So we can use a couple of data structures, but my implementation here um, that I really enjoyed is going to actually use the fact that we know what row we're looking for and that we know the relationship of Pascal's triangle, which is that the uh, middle term is going to be a sum of the one directly above it to the right and left. So two is a sum of one and one, which is two, and then three is a sum of one and two, and this three is a sum of two and one, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's a little bit hard to trace in code, but once you write it out and you see how things work out, it's kind of clever and it uses um, a pre-located uh, array to, to do this. So um, I hope you guys enjoy and let's get into the code. So it's a pretty short method. Um, we're going to be returning a, uh, a list of integer type and we're taking an n, which is the row we're looking for um, and note the uh, diagram to the left over here. Um, so we're just going to create an integer array and we're just going to give it the size of n plus one. Uh, now, if you look at Pascal's triangle, you can notice that the size of our nth row is simply going to just have the size of n plus one. So our zeroth, our zeroth or our first row, so to speak, is just going to have the size of one. So zero plus one is one. Our first one is going to be one plus one, two elements. And so we know if we're looking for the fourth, the fourth, um, the fourth row. So that would be, um, we would just have, it would just be n plus one. So it would just be five actual elements in the array. So we can pre-locate it and we can be confident that that's all we need back, right? Um, so in order to do the manipulation that we're looking for, we're going to want to actually access and take advantage of that array fully. So we can just simply use uh, the arrays class and the method fill to just fill the whole array um, right there with zeros. And then um, one of the assumptions with uh, Pascal's triangle is that we start the first element, the one at the top or the root, um, with one. And going from there, we're simply just going to use the relationship uh, of Pascal's triangle to go through and build the the nth row. Um, it's kind of hard to, to trace it verbally. Uh, it's, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense. But if we go, if we suppose that um, that one that that we're at one, we're starting at one. So um, so one so row is equal to one. It's less than n, and we're looking for the third row. Suppose uh, it's simply j is going to be one. So the first position right now we only have we only have oops I don't want to select the whole thing. But right now we only have um, right now we only have this. Right, I can, we only have this, right? So now <clears throat> we're starting at the first row, which is really the second one, <laughs> but you guys probably already know that. Um, and we want to, we want the second, we want to fill the second element. So uh, array of J, which is going to be one, which is going to be this slot right here, right? This is the index one, right? I could do that in a separate color. Right, this is the index one, right? Um, and we want to fill that. We don't know what this is yet. So we can say, okay, so this array of index one is equal to, going to be equal to array of index one, which we filled with zeros, right? Call that. Don't click like that. <laughs> and okay, so it's going to be zero plus the one before it. So zero plus the one before it. Well, the one before it is right here is one. So it's just going to be zero plus one, which is just going to be one. And like that, we, we have... We have the first row or the index of the first row, um, the data for that. And, and that's kind of cool. Um, and from here, the relationship's going to hold. 
So I'd like to just go further into this and explain it uh, visually instead of continuing. All right, so if we're starting at row one, we can see that R is going to be, well, I'm just saying R is row, and then J is J there. So R is one and J is one. Simply, we just saw that assignment. So it's just going to uh, do those calls and fill it up. So we have zero, zero plus the one before it is one. We set that and we're done, right? So now we increment R. I'm just gonna pull this over so you can actually see that. We increment R, right? And so R is now two which means that J is going to start at two and then J. So J position two, that's going to be um, over here. So Ray in, of index sub two, which is technically right here. Um, that's going to be equal to the one before it. So zero plus one, which is just going to be one, right? And we're basically going to build this guy. And then we're going to deck, uh, decrease j so we're still gonna have r still two because we're going inside this this uh decreasing inner loop so the outer loop stays the same two now now the inner loop j decreases from two to one and so we're gonna say okay so j which is position j so which would be index one which is right over there now that's going to be equal to the one before it plus well rather so j minus one which is zero position zero is going to be one and one plus J, which is where we're at right now, one plus one is two. And so right now what we've done is we built this row, right? So this, instead of being one, is no longer one. It's going to be two. Uh, and disregard that two. <laughs> the other one over there. Uh, and so that's kind of how this is gonna work out. Um, it's, 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 it's kind of a weird relationship. But it's kind of cool, right? Um, we've essentially just built the next one using the previous one. And we can continue doing that. I mean, suppose we want to create the third row. Okay, so that all that means is that our, our row is going to be three, which means that J is gonna start at three, and then this is gonna stay three again, and then we're gonna go, so it's gonna be two, one, so this is going to be three okay so r is three which means i'm gonna erase these okay so the third row the third position of the third row let's use the one previous before it this has a zero recall that so three three so the third index so zero one two three this one right here that's what we're pointing at when we're recalling this line over here right so that means that the third position is going to be the third position which is zero plus the one before it. So zero plus the one before it, which is just gonna be one. So that means that we've taken care of our edge. Our edge is gonna be one. Now the one previous, that was this call. Boom. Now we're still in this third in this third row. Now the one previous, J is now two. We wanna set two, which is this position right here. We'll move that pointer to here. We're gonna say this, you know, we're gonna change that. Now that's gonna to equal to the the value of j which is two so the array value of two which is one maybe i'm being too explicit but i think it helps um plus the one before it so two plus one is equal to three now you see we're building the we're building the row right below it so this is going to turn into three a very small three and now we move the pointer to over here right and we can try to can try to visualize that Right, so now we're over there. That's our pointer. And I'm gonna scribble that that, that guy over there. Um, and we're gonna say, okay, well, we're at, we're at the final one. And J is one now. So the position of the array of J, which is one. So that's going to be where our pointer is. That's just going to be equal the one prior to it, which is just going to be one plus the one we're at, which had the value of, well, two so that's just gonna be three right and i think it's become obvious that we built the row below it and that was with input three that was with input three and we're going in our code up until three so essentially we're just building the row below it using the located space in our array now we can plop that all into this array up here and that would also work but um now that i'm doing it over here i think using the actual 
um, the actual uh, Pascal's triangle was a little more helpful. Um, I, ho I hope this explanation kind of makes sense to you. Uh, you know, I, I saw this kind of implementation somewhere and I thought that's just really kind of clever because you're not using all of these uh, just this, these methods um, from, let's say, an array list, or you're not building yourself a Pascal's triangle, which might be overcomplicating the uh, scenario. I think it would be kind of impressive to realize, especially on in an interview, uh, that when you're given a piece of data, um, such as the size of the array, if you, which you know, given the relationship with Pascal's triangle, it can be kind of impressive to use the relation of Pascal's triangle to build the nth row. Uh, and so I hope this video was helpful. Uh, and if uh, there's anything that doesn't make sense or is completely false, it's entirely possible. So I'd uh, be open to your feedback below and uh, expect some more videos soon. Thank you.